guys, Howard here with a revisit of Get Back by the Beatles. I actually did a video for this a few years ago, uh, and so it's uh, desperately needing a little updating, you might say. But more importantly, I wanted to clarify a few things in the tab and talk about a couple of little idiosyncrasies that uh, you can incorporate into this. Now, obviously, there's two guitar parts. There's the one that George Harrison plays and the one that John Lennon plays. And uh, Harrison is on his Telecaster and Lennon is on his Epiphone, of course. So there's a little bit of different uh, tones going on there as well. But what I'm going to do is, like I did in the other video, kind of mosh the two guitar parts together so that it's really fun and playable on one guitar. So at times I'll dial into George's part just a little bit and then at times mainly into Lennon's because that's the, uh, the main focused guitar, you might say. All right, so here we go. Uh, out the gate, which I didn't mention in the previous video, you know, Lennon's is, he's just sitting on that A chord and, and pounding away, right? On the A chord. You can do that if you want to, but what you hear on the recording more is George Harrison's part. Right, so he's writing that A chord and then he does the crashing, uh, G and D. And again, his tone is a little bit brighter, but still the guitar tones are pretty warm. So you want your uh, toggle in the uh, middle position, at least, if not the neck position, which I think the neck position kind of captures Lennon's tone a little bit better. So what we have is a standard A chord. You can see it on the tab. But what Harrison's doing is he's muting slightly back here, especially the A string. And then opening things up a little bit more for that upstroke on the G and the D. And then he crashes on the G and the D. So you start off a little bit softer and then just start building it up, right? And then we are full throttle into the tune. And for this, we're focusing on John Lennon's part, the boogie woogie part. And again, I think the neck position kind of captures a little bit more of his tone, but either way is totally fine. So he's just playing the old uh, standard chug along boogie riff, but he's really just playing this. But he's keeping his pick going so you get those little percussive mutes in between. So to capture that, you can just kind of put slight pressure each time you're hitting, releasing it slightly in between, and then with your pick still going, you'll get this, like that. And then he moves up to the 10th fret. You can actually see that in the rooftop concert, but also you can hear it on the recording where you hear it just kind of slide up a little bit. So he does play it up here rather than shifting down to the uh, A and the D string. And uh, that puts him close to the lick he's going to play, so it works out pretty good. course okay so for the verses again we're playing that boogie pattern and it does vary a little bit you know you'll hear stuff like you know just vary it a little bit as you make your way through it uh, but he tosses in those little lead fills right and uh, I'll show you how he grabs that A chord how he brings it back around so nice and slow you can see the tab on the screen you want to mute a little bit back here into the lick. So you can see the tab on the screen, of course, but let me play that nice and slow for you so you can see which fingers I'm using. Now, when he comes back to this A chord, you can hear it on the recording, he kind of goes, just kind of grabbing it because of the tail end of the lick. So I kind of do it with a just to get back into the pocket, right? So if I play that nice and slow, it will sound like this. So there it is. 
So that's the chorus. Great little part, right? So uh, I'll just slow that down nice and slow and uh, kind of take you through it, all right? So I'm sliding with my third finger, my ring finger, from the seventh to the ninth fret. Then seven, nine on the A string, seven on the D string. And we form an A7 chord. Seventh fret on the D string, ninth fret on the G string, eighth fret on the B string, and then ninth fret on the E string, okay? I've got it tabbed out where you're playing the uh, just on the first three strings, but it doesn't matter if you hit the D string and all that as well, right? Just focusing on the shape of the chord. Right? You play that twice, then you do the lick again, but this time you form a D7, however you like to play it. Seven on the D, seven on the G, seven on the B, and eight on the E. Right, so we have now as I was talking about earlier about moshing the parts together what you hear Lennon play is he just comes back and plays the A7 lick again and continues from there in other words he plays starts again. But what's cool is to put those crashing chords in between because that really stands out on the recording. In fact, his A7 chord is a little bit buried in the recording. So it's pretty cool to just play it like this. sounds pretty cool just to put those the crashing uh, G and D in between and then of course John goes into his first solo pretty cool little solo I always liked it and that lick at the end is actually pretty tricky um, but let me play it for you nice and slow with the tab up on the screen, of course, and that way you can see which fingers I'm using. So uh, pretty straight ahead, but that second time around where he plays it, that's pretty cool. He's kind of popping it with a little percussiveness in there. And even though you don't see that on the tab, it happens with the pick in the right hand. You hear that little click right there, right, where he releases the pressure on the string. And that's really all there is to it, but it sounds pretty cool. at the end is always like that it's pretty cool and slightly unusual and kind of tricky to play as well and then the other thing I wanted to mention is after that first tail end of the solo the first go around that's a nice place to put those Harrison crashing chords It sounds again pretty cool to just toss those in there if you're just playing it on one guitar by yourself and then of course we are into another chorus right 
And uh, there's a little bit that you can add here as well. You can just play the straight boogie if you want to. But we want to add those crashing chords because that's what they do. It sounds really great. But also, Billy Preston is playing a minor seventh on the piano, the electric piano. And that's kind of fun to add to the guitar, okay? So instead of just playing the straight boogie pattern, you can play... in there as well. Three and five on the D string, or the A string and the D string, up to five and seven. And uh, I want to toss Billy Preston's keyboard lick in there as well. But for that minor seventh, what you're doing is you're playing the boogie pattern, and then barring, just bar across all six strings at the fifth fret to bring in that minor seventh. And you don't have to go any further than the G string. If you happen to hit more, it's still going to sound okay. But that's how you put it in there. Uh, but let me play it for you nice and slow and put it in the pocket where it's at. So you can see you have to come back and catch the boogie pattern with your pinky. play that twice and the second time they go through that you really hear them kick that the whole band kicks that minor seventh chord or at least that accent right so you play it twice you can see I brought it up to here back to A and then those crashing chords okay so that whole chorus is played like this Preston plays that really cool fill. And you're back into it, right? So I've tabbed that out for you as well because it's just cool. It's just double stops on the guitar and you can play it straight. Or you can put little slides in front of it. sounds kind of nice as well okay and then we are into uh, the keyboard solo itself and for the solo it's just really straight ahead we're just playing and then it's into another verse okay but what's cool about this particular verse is Lennon tosses in that lick. He tosses it into the verse. He plays that first, and then he plays that. So for this verse, we are actually playing. So that's the second verse, and then we are into another chorus. And we are going to play that exactly as we did before. And then it moves into Lennon's second solo, which is really just a variation on the first solo, but let's talk about that as well. It's just fun stuff to play, right? So he's just got a lot of variations in there. You can see he's, he's waxing that lick again and some other things. Uh, but let's just put the tab up on the screen and go over it nice and slow. Once you 
once again, nice and slow. Really nice, a very tasty solo from uh, from Lennon. Thank you. 